Good morning, it's Ray Urias with OP Noobs, PC Gaming by PC Gamers, coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas, PAX South. I'm here with Dave Serlin. Dave, thank you for having us. Oh, thanks for coming to our booth. It's a pleasure. A gorgeous booth, gorgeous artwork, beautiful game. We're in front of Fantasy Strike. I mean, if you don't know Dave Serlin and you're developing video games, delete your account, as they say. So tell us a little bit about it. When did you start developing the game and how's it been coming along? Uh, we started over two and a half years ago, and it was a gameplay first type thing where we started to, just as a prototype to make sure that this kind of wacky, unusual uh, way of making a fighting game would work out. Uh, and what else would you did you ask there? When you say, well, so I, I've got go, two questions, go, go sure. The, what I'd ask is, how's it coming along in terms of the original vision? Is it what you thought it would be? Yeah, it's really close to the, the original vision. So the original idea, which was just a, uh, a guess, it was, you know, it wasn't something I was confident in, was what if you made a game where the complexity of it was more than Dive Kick, that's a game that only has two buttons and no joystick, but less than every other fighting game, less than Street Fighter, or Guilty Gear, or Tekken, and so on. Uh, if, if you had a game in that kind of new zone, could it be still as deep and interesting strategically as the other games? And I kind of theorized about how it might be, and we tried it. What we did was basically started with something so simple that it's even closer to Dive Kick and added a little more and a little more and a little more until we got to the level of complexity that it is now, which is still simpler than every other fighting game. And, and everyone that tried it early on was encouraging. Like that, our universal feedback was keep going, keep going, they keep developing this. And since it was so positive, I you know went all in on it and uh, started on all the production values and you know hiring all the. 3D artists and visual effects artists, sound effects, and, and so on. And it's it's been a long road, but going really well. So you mentioned a couple times the kind of pick up and play approachability of the game. When you sat down initially, what was it about every other fighting game that you thought needed to be improved? <laughs> sure, sure, great question. So, uh, like Guilty Gear is one of my favorite games, and. If I want someone to play Guilty Gear with me, I mean, it takes months. It takes literally months to, to teach them to be competition for me. And so I, that's the kind of thing I was thinking about. So why why is that? Uh, part of it, not not all of it, but part of it is just the control scheme. You, you, you know, uh, quarter circles and dragon punch motions, that's been uh, a key part of fighting games forever, but do we really need that? And uh, I think we've shown that you you don't. Uh, if you just take an existing fighting game, you just took Street Fighter V, and then you made everything into a single button press like it is in our game, and that's all you did, I don't think that would work very well at all. It have a lot of problems. Like, Dragon Punches would be too good, for example. Maybe Zangief's throw or, or something would have problems. So we've had to design the game around the concept that uh, we know all the moves are single button press. So they, some moves that are like a Dragon Punch have various different drawbacks built into them, depending on the character. Uh, so, so one of the, the things is, is that. But uh, beyond that, um, even the life bar, you can see the, the life bar is segmented there, so you know that one hit is one damage. Uh, you just immediately kind of get it. You know if your combo is going to kill. Uh, let, me, let me tell you one more thing, is that when we scale down the number of moves to... Uh, most 2D fighting games have maybe 30 moves or something, we have like around 12 to 14. So it, it doesn't make it shallower, it just means that every one of those moves has to really count, everyone has to pull its weight and be part of some kind of strategy. But because there's only 12 or, or 14, we can have a move list that fits all on one screen, and there's enough room to explain like, you probably want to use this move in this situation. Uh, uh, so uh, that's another aspect where when someone's new, they can go from zero to controlling the game to understanding what are all the moves, how should they be used very quickly. I can get people in five or ten minutes of, like if I sit down with them and you know go through everything and they're already playing kind of for real. You know, they're, they're not an expert, but they like they're at least doing the equivalent of fireball and when they jump dragon punch, which they might struggle with if it were a traditional fighting game. I think that there's a lot of 
and I can see this, the attack is very clear. There's an honesty and a directness in the game that is definitely resonating with the gaming community. Your Discord channel is popping off. We're very interested to see how the competitive scene picks up on this because I think it's going to be pretty big. I mean, simple done right is very elegant and very enjoyable for audiences and members alike. So just a quick question as we wrap it up here. I understand you have a new game mode. Yes, we have unveiled a new team battle mode today, and uh, I'll say a few words about what that means. So, it's not the Marvel versus Capcom style where you have several characters on screen at once. It's more like I pick a team of three, you pick a team of three, and we're going to do a set of three out of five. And I don't really have time to go through all of how, how it works, but uh, the short version is that uh, it is very elegant and simple, and it works in a way that I have not seen done before. Uh, it, and it, what it does is it, it actually maximizes the number of different matchups that we're going to play. So it, it's, there's a lot, yeah, which is not normal. I actually have to win with all three of my characters. Uh, I will play my entire team. You will play your entire team. It's kind of like a character battle. Right, right. So uh, it's... The, the specific way it works is really good for competitive play, but it also happens to be exactly what spectators want to see. Yes. You know, spectators get to, they don't just see one match, you know, best four to seven, just over and over and over. They want to see a really good player play another really good player in a bunch of crazy, yeah. unique scenarios. So, very exciting here, and a quick question. It's an EA now, early access now. Right. When are you going to roll it out full-fledged? So, we don't know exactly because it depends on how many extra game modes and features we can pack into it. We're shooting for this summer. Uh, this summer we would switch over the early access to, uh, to you know, full Steam release on Mac and PC and at the same time launch on PlayStation 4 with cross-platform play between them. If we are a little late, it's probably because we're working on the cross-platform play. It's, it's difficult to get that right. Very difficult cross-platform balance issues. Uh, Dave, it has been a real pleasure talking to you. It's a beautiful game. You have a very talented team and you have a great vision. And I look forward to seeing this game blossom in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>